بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أكرمني من ظلمات الله وأكرمني من نور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا الله ورحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن عظيمك ورحمتك الله ورحمة الله We talked that in Islam we need to be engaged in self-purification. And this is very important. Islamic plan for life cannot be understood without this. Islamic plan for life is not just do this, don't do that. It's much more essential, much more substantial. And that is to work on your soul, work on your heart. In our hadith and also in the verses of the Quran, you find that different patterns, different models or different treatments of spirituality are mentioned in order to help us better understand the seriousness of this issue. Sometimes you find that this spirituality, this self you know, purification is introduced as a kind of battle, as a kind of fight, as a kind of jihad. In a paper that is called Different Treatments of Spirituality, I have mentioned three treatments. <coughs> One is a spirituality as combat with the self. The reason this is called combat, it's because in the Quran itself, this, the concept of jihad is used for this, and very also clearly in a hadith from the Prophet. It's not the only hadith, but this hadith is very obvious, very well known. Uh, for example, Imam Qasim alayhi salam narrates from his fathers and finally from Amir al muminin that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a group of Muslims for a battle. Inna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ba'atha sariyyatan. Sariya uh, is the battle in which the Prophet was not himself there. When he was sending, Qazwa is the one that he himself was there. Sariya is what he was not there. So he sent a group of people for battle. Falamma raja'u. When they returned to Medina, qala marhaban bi qawmin qadawu al-jihad al-asqar. Rasulullah said, well done to the people and welcome to the people who have finished the minor jihad, the minor struggle. And now on them is the greater struggle. Still they have to do the greater jihad. قيل يا رسول الله وما الجهاد الأكبر؟ What is the greater? Because these people, you know, were ready to give their life. Absolutely. Yeah. So what can be bigger than giving your life? They didn't know. Maybe they thought there is an enemy which is more severe. You know, they they didn't know what is jihad. رسول الله said جهاد النفس. to fight against your own soul, self or your own soul which is not purified. This is more difficult. There are many reasons why this is more difficult. For example, Jihad Asghar, the minor Jihad, takes few days or few weeks or few months or few years maximum. But this Jihad al-Akbar, all your life, even after 30, 40, 50 years, you cannot say, Alhamdulillah, this is finished. Now rest of my life, I don't need to bother, no. 
up to the last moment of your life, you have to be worried. Shaitan would not let us, you know, have, you know, any rest. The moment you want to have rest, you become more vulnerable. <laughs> when you are alert, then there is a better chance to defeat Shaitan. So, this jihad has no limit in time. Another problem with this jihad is that this jihad has no limit in a space, in place. You know, when you have minor jihad, either you are fighting, for example, in the borders or in the enemy's territory or they have invaded your country, but there is a border. At least you have some places that you can say the enemy is not there. Even if they come and invade your country, at least there are rooms, there are houses, there are places that the enemy is not there. But this is jihad against an enemy who is inside me. And even for a moment, I cannot have any rest, any freedom. <coughs> The third problem is when you have external enemy you might be able to hide some of the secrets from enemy. The, one of the most important factors in the war is to protect your secrets from enemy. Some of your very you know, confidential you know, information. Sometimes you can do this 100%, sometimes you can do this 70%, sometimes 50%. But in this jihad, we don't have any secret. Our enemy knows everything about us. It's very difficult. You, know, you cannot do anything unless your enemy knows about this. It's very difficult. It knows all your strong points and all your weak points. Everything. Another problem is that in other types of jihad, we know enemy as enemy. We never incline towards our enemy. Yeah? But in this jihad, the problem is that we love our enemy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah? We have hope nafs. We love our soul. We even worship. We choose our desires of the soul as our Lord. We worship. It's very difficult when you, you know, love your enemy and you cannot, you know, uh, forget your enemy to fight your enemy. So this jihad is very, very difficult jihad. Another problem. Is it the fifth problem? Yes. Is that in minor struggle, in minor jihad, people can help you. If I have, you know, friends, if I have, you know, other people, my burden can be reduced. Sometimes we have thousands, tens of thousands of people, you know, fighting against enemy. Okay? This reduces the burden and also if I am not careful, they may do it, you know. Or for example, I can say, okay, I want to take some leave to visit my family and then I come back for jihad. Okay? But this is a jihad that every person has to do. No one can help you. Even there are millions of people who are doing this jihad, <coughs> this is not going to reduce your responsibility. You cannot rely on other people. Every person has to do this. Another problem with this is that this jihad is a starting from early age. Even a teenager has to be ready for this jihad. As soon as you are Balik, even before you are Balik, 
this is problem. Because when you are not balig, still you have to act morally. Yeah? Maybe you have no obligation, no taklif, but still you have to work against your bad desires. Indeed, many of the things that we do before we become balik would shape our future. Yeah? You cannot say to a boy, you know, whatever you want to do before you become 15 years old, do it. There are many things that if you do, don't do them before that age, later, it's impossible or very difficult. It's very important to have pious childhood. Because then later it's very difficult to change the track. So, in minor jihad, as a child you are exempted. As a young teenager you are exempted. But this jihad is something that even as a child you are not exempted. As a teenager you are not exempted. So, you get into it when you are young, when you have no experience. It's very difficult. In the other jihad, you say, okay, first I go for training, well, first I learn, then I go to jihad. But here, no. Sometimes you have to learn in the process of jihad. You learn. You, know, you cannot say, okay, ex exempt me, I learn, and then I come back. So even if you go, for example, for learning, if you go, for example, to Hose, it's not that in Hose, shaitan leaves you alone, says, okay, now you are learning, I leave you alone. When you learn, we start fighting. Your soul, your sh enemy, everyone is there. In every place, even the holiest places, they don't leave you. So, these are some of the things that make this jihad very difficult. Maybe you can reflect and find out more points why this is jihad al-akbar. There is a hadith that Abu Zar once asked Rasulullah, which struggle is the best? And the Prophet said, An yujahid ar-rajul nafsahu wa hawahu. To struggle against one's own self and lust is the best. Quran also talks about this. For example, in chapter 29, verse 6, Allah says, وَمَنْ جَاهَدَهُ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِ The one who struggles, who strives, he strives only for his own soul, for his own self. وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ Here, ulama have discussion, is this jihad in a spiritual sense or jihad in a militant sense? But many of them say this is a spiritual <coughs> jihad. Why? Because Allah says He is doing this for Himself. And also the next verse says, uh, the, sorry, the verse before says, Man kana yarju laqa Allah, fa inna ajal Allah laatan wa huwa al alim. The one who has hope to meet God. So this makes it more likely to be a spiritual jihad, or at least it includes. A spiritual jihad. Or Allah says in chapter 29, verse 69. <coughs> Those who struggle fina for us, for our sake, in our way, we will certainly guide them to our ways. Allah is with the people who do good things. So, whoever struggles, Allah will help him. This is one model to think of self-purification as a battle, as a combat with the internal enemy. Another model is <coughs> a spirituality as a medicine. Because we said we want to get rid of the germs, the pollutions, the dirts, the impurities. So we need 
a type of medicine. Who is the patient? It's not our body. In normal medicine, we have different organs of body. But here, what we have is the soul or the heart which is ill. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرْضًا About the munafiqeen, about the hypocrites in Surah Baqarah verse 10. Allah says, فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ In their heart, there is illness. What type of illness? This is not the physical illness. It's a spiritual illness. The heart can be full of disease, or can have some disease or can be completely healthy. What we call the heart which is healthy, which is pure? al <laughs> Prophet Ibrahim salam said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, help me by few things. One of the things he said, لا تخزني يوم يبعثون Please do not disgrace me on the day of resurrection. What is the day of resurrection? يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون The day that neither money nor children can help. إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم The only people who would be helped are those who come with pure heart. Healthy heart. Means there's no disease in the heart. There's no illness, there's no germ, there's no pollution. It's purified. This is chapter 26, verses 87 up to 89. 26, verses 87 up to 89. There is a pardon? Surah Shu'ara. Shu'ara. The the concept of Qalb Salim is very important concept. And you know, Ayatollah Dasqib has a book, Qalb Salim, about ethics. There is a beautiful hadith from Imam Sadiq salam in Kafi, defining Qalb Salim, meaning of Qalb Salim. It says, Al Qalb Salim, Alladi Yalqa Rabbahu, Walaysa Fiha Ahadun Sawah. Qalb Salim is the heart that meets its Lord when there is no one else in that heart. If Allah is in my heart and dunya is in my heart, my house, my job, my car, my money, my position, my children, my family, next to Allah, not under Allah. Under Allah there is no problem. You should love your family, you should love your children, but not next to Allah, not as a rival to Allah, or na'uzu billah, more than Allah. Neither more than Allah, nor equal to Allah, or next to Allah. Everything should be under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love my children very much, but not as my Lord, not as my God. I love them because Allah wants me to love them. Imam Hussein alayhi salam in Dua Arafah says, Ilahi antalladi azalta al-aghiyar أن قلوب أحبائك حتى لم يحبوا سباك. You are the one 
that you removed others from the heart of your friends to the extent that they never loved anyone other than you. Okay? Lam yuhab. They didn't love anyone sewak other than you. So, a mu'min, if his heart is salim, it means that there is no one other than Allah. If there is dunya or anything from dunya occupying our heart, then our heart becomes ill. The only thing that can make our heart function properly and healthy is when Allah is there. You know, like for example, if you have a operation theater in the hospital, the only way that this operation theater can function properly is if a qualified doctor is there. Yeah? If there is no doctor or the doctor is not qualified, then this... If the doctor is there, but at the same time, there is someone who is selling fruits there, there is someone who is, I don't know, building a house there inside the operation theater, it doesn't work. So, there must be a qualified doctor and it must be dedicated <coughs> to the purpose. In our heart, we should only let Allah be there and it must be dedicated to Allah and then anything else at the service of Allah. If Allah says, I need this, give me, for example, this material, give me that material, bring this person, that person, no problem. But it must be dedicated to Allah. There is another hadith which says, Al-Qalbu Haramullah. La tuskin haram Allah ghayr Allah. It's the sanctuary of Allah. Don't let anyone other than Allah to let into this sanctuary. <coughs> you know, uh, in the time of Jahiliyyah, they used to have idols inside Kaaba. How wrong it is. You know, to worship idols is very bad. To keep idols is very bad. But to keep idols inside Kaaba is the worst thing. It's like what? It's like, for example, you encourage people to be ignorant from the school. You encourage people to not, for example, be religious from mosque. You spread germs from hospital. This is the worst thing. Inside Kaaba, which is supposed to be dedicated to Tawheed, they had the idols. Our heart is like Kaaba. This has to be dedicated to Allah. So if we keep these idols inside the Kaaba, we are doing the same thing that people in the time of Jahiliyyah were doing. It takes time to realize that our heart is Kaaba. Unfortunately, we let everything come and go. Our ears are the channels to our heart. Only what is godly should go into our ears. Our hearts, our eyes, everything. Everything must be pure. There is a hadith Amir al Mumin said, Allah wa inna min al bala'i al faqah. One of the catastrophes, one of the calamities is poverty. It's very difficult to be poor. But wa ashaddu min al faqah maradhu al badan. But more difficult than poverty is illness of body. If your body is ill, it's worse than being poor. But وَأَشَدُّ مِنْ مَرَضِ الْبَدَنْ مَرَضُ الْقَالِ But more difficult than the illness of body is the illness of the heart. So it means that illness of heart is the most difficult thing. It's worse than physical illness, it's worse than poverty. You 
Imam Baqir alayhi salam said, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا عِلْمَ كَطَلَبِ السَّلَامَ There is no knowledge like seeking health. وَلَا سَلَامَةَ كَسَلَامَةِ الْقَلْبِ But there is no health like the health of the soul, the heart. You know, in Islam, medicine is very encouraged because it helps you for health. But more important than health of the body is the health of the soul. So we have two types of doctors. Doctors who help us to maintain health of body. Doctors who help us to maintain the health of the soul. Rasulullah himself was a doctor for the soul. Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam says, this is Nahjul Balagha, Tabibun Dawarun Bitabbih. Rasulullah was a doctor, a physician, but he was Dawarun Bitabbih. He was rooming. Rooming. He was going around. Dawarun Bitabbih. You know, if you are a doctor for physical illness, you can sit in your surgery and people come to you. Why they come to you? Because they have pain. They have problems. They come to you. Sometimes there is no pain. There are no symptoms. They don't come to you and that it makes the treatment very difficult. This is the problem with cancer. Many times there is no symptom. People don't come and by the time they realize it might be late. But in many types of physical illness, there are some types of problems that make them come to the doctor. In the spiritual illness, unfortunately, either there is no pain or there is pain, but the pain is not physical. The pain is psychological, mental, spiritual, and they don't understand that the pain is coming from a problem in the heart. They think pain is coming from people. Pain comes because they don't have money. You know, if I'm not connected to Allah and I am poor, I think the pain is because I don't have, you know, big house. So I worked hard day and night to become rich. And I think this makes my life meaningful. Okay? I find the solution in wrong place. But the doctor who is the spiritual doctor is responsible to come and offer help to these people. The doctor cannot say, okay, I am here, you can come and see me and I will help you. The doctor has to go around, has to travel, has to offer, looks at people, looks at communities and say, okay, in you as a person or in your community, I have found 10 problems. You have to do this. Rasulullah was tabibun dawarun bittabbih. He was going around. Qad ahkama marahimahu wa ahma mawasimahu. And he was taking his equipment with him. He had the ointments ready. He had his uh, instruments heated, you know, sterilized. And he was putting them when it was needed. The hearts which were blind. The ears which were not able to listen to the truth. The tongues which were not able to speak the truth. متتبع بالدوائه مواضع الغفلة ومواطن الحيرة. رسول الله was going around with his medicine and equipments to the place of غفلة when people are negligent and حيرة when people are perplexed. The most destructive thing for people is when they don't know what to do. They are confused. You have to help them. So this is another model. And 
I think we continue, inshallah, after Salah. Alhamdulillah.